Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Mulvena. Welcome back to the Xterra Mixed Relay Short Track. My name's Paul Groves. We've got Sunshine and we've got Doug Hall with us. Doug Hall, General Manager for Europe, Middle East and Africa. Doug, what, what, what's the format for today? Well, we have got something sp special. Obviously, yesterday we uh, focused quite a lot on the elite race at the Xterra World Championships. Uh, but today, it is the age group's turn to get on the television. Uh, we have a age group mixed team relay. Teams of four competing in a triathlon each before handing over to their next teammate. Uh, it's going to be complete chaos, and uh, I cannot wait. So this is what Bolvina is all about. It's not just off-road triathlon, it's something special for everybody. Look at these images. Yeah, we watched this. I, I, we watched this again yesterday, and like I said, the, the, the weather has turned on today, and it's showing Molvino in its very, very best light. If you are into any kind of outdoor activity, sport, culture, lifestyle, and you just want to come and have a good time with your friends and your family, then Molvino is a perfect location to really enjoy yourself. Loads of hotels here in Molvino and uh, further up in Andalo, cafes, restaurants, bars and they are so bike friendly. You, you said yesterday there's something like 200 kilometers plus of really specifically constructed exactly. mountain bike trails. all hidden away in those trees there. So we... Perfect, so uh, obviously we had a lot of action this week. Uh, and it all kicked off on Thursday with the World Cup and the last round of the Xterra short, short track. Well, I think we're going to get a slight glance of that short track. So here it is, the short track, invitation only, the best elite in the world. So we had uh, Maeve Kennedy and Emma Ducrot would lead out of the water in the short track, being into the early parts of the bike before Solem Boulon put the hammer down and ran away with the victory to finish with in first With the victorious place. hat as well. <laughs> so there we go, number one. In the men's race, Jens Roth would lead out of the water with all of the group close behind as they headed onto the short track course. And for this race, uh, Artyo Sarje didn't really need to push that hard because he was already full of the points. But at the last minute, there was chaos when the two guys were so locked together. Jens Emil and Artyo Sarje absolutely locked into the battle and they were so focused on what each other was doing, they missed the turn. Got but to look turn at that. left. Solomon <laughs> Miller from the States. Youngster on the scene now uh, from the great, great stable, the mid off stable in uh, the States. Yeah. Here we go. We yeah. go on to some highlights from our World Championship event that took place yesterday. So, similar stories. We've got some amazing images. You can go back and watch the entire race from start to finish uh, and see how our, the action panned out for all the athletes yesterday. Yeah, it was a tough race at the front. It was uh, really tough for Felix Forissier, who looked like he had it sewn up. But that uh, tremendous pace, the turnover from Arthur Sevier made sure that he was able to come back and defend his title. And we spoke to him last night. He said the pressure really was on him, but the celebration was entirely different. Yeah, and a very Central. similar story for Solem Boulon, also defending her World Championship title here in Malvino. Rightly wearing number one. So France takes titles in both the men's and the women's elite. Uh, there was also a fantastic 750-odd uh, athletes racing in the age group categories. The celebrations went on last night. You gave me some figures just now, Doug. We had over a thousand people. A thousand people? A thousand people at our award ceremony course. last night. And it was spectacular. <coughs> we had lots of rich Italian food and wine. Oh, yes, uh, all provided as part of the package. Exactly. So, some weather conditions. 18 degrees is the air temperature today. Not a lot of humidity. A little bit of wind from the northwest, but probably not enough to uh, bother these athletes competing this age group mixed team relay today. So now, you see you a, a few little snippets of some of the course. These guys will be racing on the exact same lap as our elites did last Thursday. So this is a chance for the age groupers to experience exactly what it's like to go in that fast and furious short track format. You, you mentioned it's going to be a bit chaotic. Well, it certainly will be. We've got some, um, we haven't got the, the standard mixed pattern for you. We've got some of the teams are all male, some of the teams are all female, some have got one male, some have got one female. It's, it's just a chance for the age groupers really to get together 
Um, we've got different nationalities in the teams. We've got a para-athlete racing in one of the teams. We've got some rather inventive names. Um, but this is going to be... The swim is going to be a very short 200-metre swim. Yep, uh, really, really short. Uh, I'm hearing lots of people are going without wetsuits mm. this morning. Like I said, only a 200-metre swim, so very, very short. Hopefully, there won't be too much chaos. Uh, like I said, we've got one three-kilometre bike lap. So they will be completing, like I said, exactly the same course as the elites did. So a mixture of tracks around the lakeside and some artificial features in there too. The run lap is slightly different, Paul. I said they'll head out along the beach in the same direction they did for the Xterra World Championships before hanging a ride, coming around the campsite and back into the event village. It's a relatively flat run then, isn't it? Exactly. It's not uh, the world's most technical course this afternoon, but this is, that's not the point. This is an opportunity to really showcase that, I said, the Xterra community, the Xterra family. We've got, like you said, teams of all shapes, sizes, genders, combinations. And uh, like I said, it's just a good chance to wrap up our World Championship weekend with a lot of fun. Well, we've had this morning uh, races for the kids. We've had a whole host of uh, children racing over different distances. And that's, and that's been taking place uh, in the glorious sunshine. So these are the teams. OK, um, we'll give you a bit more detail about each and individual team as we go through the course of the races. Um, <clears throat> we we did have one name that has been changed, thankfully, because <laughs> we would probably got in, into trouble. But yes, there were some very creative uh, names, which <laughs> some of them not suitable for a live broadcast. But here we go. So like I said, we... Uh, Speed Girls and Moustache Gentlemen. I mean, that's a yeah, different one. Yeah, I think that's probably my favourite name so far. Oh, the Team Taiwan Boys. I'm looking forward to seeing how they get on. Here we um, go. The Muckoff, now that's part of the, one of the sponsors. They exactly, so Zogs and Muckoff have, are you know, sponsors of, of the Xterra World Championship weekend. They have put a couple of teams in just to uh, see how they get on amongst these real athletes. And within the group, we've also got um, some legends taking part. We've got, uh, they're called the Misfits. There's um, one, one team called the Misfits. We've got somebody in there whose name is... Uh, it's synonymous with the history of, of uh, Xterra. Conrad Stoltz from South Africa. Sadly, he wasn't racing yesterday. He joined us in the commentary <laughs> studio um, just to say hi, but... Um <laughs> Here we go, we're getting some images. We're going to have a lot of fun today, I think. So There will obviously be a little bit of racing, but uh, yeah, I can't wait to see this. I mean... <laughs> I mean, did you hear the story? So obviously, we've uh, you know, not everybody has uh, three friends. So some people have had to uh, kind of be um, assigned a team, should we say. So Conrad Stoltz is one of those people without any friends. And um, I mean, we all love him, but you know. Uh, so, you know, he was assigned to a team that needed one extra person. So that's the so team that's going to be a mix of can Canada, imagine, South Africa and two I can, Germans. I can imagine that team sitting around at dinner saying, oh, I wonder who we're going to get. <laughs> I wonder who we're going to get for our, our fourth teammate. I hope, you know, I hope they're quite good. I hope they're not going to let us down. And then you get the three-time ex-Terra <laughs> world champion. But then Conrad also, Stoltz you've, in you've your got team. Uh, Nico Lebrun, who's the... Um, Nico is the director who creates the courses that we um, and oversees the quality of the courses. Uh, to give you an indication of what Nico's job is, he, he basically spends most of his time with his feet up doing nothing, apart from <laughs> yesterday morning at 4.30 when he was out checking yeah. the run course. Um, and it was Nico who found that part of the run course was, um, it was a torrent of water. Um, Nico has quite some history, and it's going to be great to see what he's like blowing the cobwebs off and getting back into race format. He'll be racing with team number seven, or Ganny Coach one, and he'll be racing the last leg. We've got uh, a couple of world champions racing. We've got Mia Padma, and she's, um, you know a little bit about Mia, don't you? She's in race, uh, no, team number 10, race off-road. Uh, exactly, so, uh, so number 10 is, you know, I said it's a, it's a club from the UK that I uh, have a little bit to do with. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more in the future. It looks like we're under starters orders for the first ever Xterra age group short track mixed team relay. And now full, and this is going. This is going to be fun. Well, it's a mixture of national, uh, nationalities and, in fact, uh, genders. We got uh, Romain Cizeron from France in Asme, um, Asme Zetrai, 42. Here we go. We are underway. And she was the world champion in her female category 30-34. Finished time yesterday of 3 hours 39 and 11. But uh, some choosing not to go with a wetsuit. Some using a wetsuit. 200 meters 
Well, that you're barely getting wet for 200 meters. Yeah. No, I think there's, like I said, there'll be a, a, a nice, happy, even split. I think for this first, for this first leg, I think you know you probably, for me, I think I'd go with a wetsuit. You used to around. You maybe got a time to do a little bit of a warm well, up. You don't float as well as I do. <laughs> or did. <laughs> In the uh, Czech team, number two, Czech Republic age group team, we've got uh, Peter Lukas. He was 15th in his category, male 40-44. Team number four, Italy, uh, Micheli Belemo. We've got team number four, that's going to be Jan de Wardzau by Triathlonverein Bergen Lagenfeld. Sorry, Bergen Lengenfeld. And we've got Michael Fuchs racing there. Les Mouflons from France, David Philippe. We've got uh, one arm, no beer limits. That's a great That's name. Miguel Acosta, we saw him right at the start. You'll find out why they have that name later. Uh, team Organic Coach 1, Loïc Menou from France. Organic Coach 2, we've got Jérôme Tocu. Uh, Pure Club, Daniele Baggio from Italy. Turn off-road, that's Ren Brennan. She was a little bit concerned about going into uh, the first leg, but uh, Ren or Brennan, I'm sure she'll be fine. Uh, SH training team, we've got Jérôme von der Bus, France. Speed girls and moustache gentlemen, Christoph Hartmann is racing for Germany. Team Eagles, Matteo Quaccarelli from Italy in the 25-29 age group Eagles. Team Taiwan boys, Chung Shao Yung is racing. And in team triangles, Gar Guy Dunscombe, Great Britain. The A team, Ian Anderson, that's uh, father, that's father of, of Scott. Scott. And uh, Brit is racing as well. Misfits, that's Jack Bryson from Canada. Team Triforex, that's Gianmarco Rivella. Uh, the Vaudzau from Austria and Germany, that's uh, Pamela Mittermeier. X Payne. <laughs> Elena Gomez, that Cuevas that from Spain, that's the Spanish team there. Expectant Payne. Ah, Exterra <laughs> Germany, uh, Falco Kruger. That's, that is actually a team of organisers. That's right, yeah. Uh, Z Germans, we have a team called Z Germans, Jonas Held. And first out of the water, we're going to find out who that is in a minute. What can we see? Them? We've got no numbers. Okay, that's going to be interesting. We are going to be flying a little bit by the seat of our pants, I think, on this one. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll spot the numbers on the uh, the bibs on the bike, I'm sure. Okay, Pedro Miranda from Peru in Xterra 1. The American team has to pull out at the last minute, so they've spread their athletes over some of the gaps that were created in Makov. Alessio Zoppi so and Team Zog, Alexandra Borelli. Perfect, yeah, so we... Uh, we're getting some athletes coming out of the water now, fast and furious. Like I said, leg one. I mean, I, I don't know. Obviously, this is supposed to be a bit of fun, but as soon as the start goes, uh, you know, everywhere <laughs> that, that um, there's actually uh, yeah, it's Michael Fox from uh, German team. You don't have to do the pronunciation on that one. Jag de Wusu by TV Bergland. <laughs> Bergland, I can't. Yeah. Okay, Help so that's uh, Jag de Wardzau, hunting the wild boar from Michael Fuchs there, who's leading them out. I'm not sure if this is a play on the fact that you've got Christina Herbst, who's also known as the, the wild boar, wild pig from Austria. She's been a, a long-time supporter of Xterra, and she's racing <laughs> in a, one of the other teams. Uh, so whether there's a play between this German team against the Austrian-German team, I don't know. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Fuchs looks like he's comfortably up. I can just see... Scott Anderson shouting, hopefully, for his dad in a minute. Scott was racing in the elite, had a good race yesterday. Uh, yeah, no, I've spotted plenty of elite athletes uh, have uh, wandered down this morning, uh, brushing off their hangovers and, and coming down to watch this age group mixed team relay. So I mean, it's great great for those guys to, to support this age group racing. So there we go, so our current race leader. There we go, we've got confirmation of the, uh, the number. So Michal was 13th in the M20 to 24 category. So there's a right-hand turn. They drop down, uh, following along the um, the river that feeds into the lake. I noticed this morning the lake had risen quite considerably. Yeah, it didn't quite catch the race number of that athlete as it went past, but looking resplendent. So here we go. As we're just making our way around the side of the lake before heading off into uh, the uh, the main grassy patch. So <laughs> these drone shots are good. There we go. So yeah, we've got here. Okay, so it's team 22 is oh. currently the chasing. So that is the Germans. And that will be uh, Jonas Held. Oh, 
So Jonas putting in some... Now this surface here, it, we had a hell of a lot of rain on uh, Friday. It's dried out, but there was it's been quite, it's been chewed up a fair bit, hasn't it? Getting over the jump, so we should see... That's you. Michael just getting over that jump with no problems at all, around the berm, and then he's climbing back up. And that's quite a deceptive climb though, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite cruel, taking you all the way <laughs> over the jump, all the way to the bottom of the climb before making that left mm. turn and hanging the way up. So. so these two have got quite a lead at the moment. Behind them, there's a bit of a battle going on for the third place. We will expect to see these positions changing dramatically as the relays unfold. Hmm. Yeah, exactly, and uh, you know, this is, you know, whilst these guys are quite clearly racing, I I can't wait to see some of these uh, these shots of from uh, some of the guys at the other end of the race. You know, also having some fun. It's, it, 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 it's been designed to be a fun race, but I think them some of them are taking it very very <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yes, yeah. As soon as there's a race number, uh, these guys will go for it. But uh, you could see just in the background there, all the teams slowly winching their way up that climb towards that ramp. So Michael Fuchs now back on the flat. Uh, he'll be coming uh, along this section, and he will be very, very soon. Once he loops around this section, he'll be onto the beach for a little bit, and then he will. You can see there's a motorcycle just on the left. That's the guy bike. Exactly. So We're gonna, got I think we can again, go we? down to our reporter in the field, Ryan Heaven, who has uh, found some people to talk to. Go ahead. Okay, so we're here with uh, Legend. <laughs> Conrad K. Menstoltz. You some might say you're accomplished in this uh, here off-road triathlon sport. How does it feel to be back in the game today doing this? I'm so excited about the short track. My entire career I was hoping that there would be a short track for me and now that I'm 50 years old and, uh, and retired there's a short track so I'm so excited to be here. Race the short track. Um, I'm not at all fit and um, I haven't swum since February, actually, <laughs> um, but uh, I can do this event and we made a fun team. I just entered with uh, three guys I didn't know, two Germans and a Canadian guy and uh, we're the Misfits and we're here to have fun. It's going to be awesome. Nice. And I saw you hit the mountain bike course this morning, so I know you're locked in, right? Yeah, I even took the gondola all the way to the very top of the mountain and first did the downhill course and then I came and I did this lap and it's, this, this lap is amazing because it's very spectator friendly, it's technically challenging, there's uh, lines that not everyone will be, want to take, there's A lines and B lines which will save you time if you take the A line, so I think this is made for TV and it's made for spectators and I think the athletes are going to love it, this is the first ever age group um, short track that Xterra has and I think it's going to be a big success and I think it's going to keep growing. And this might be the last chance you get to face Nico Lebron or is this going to be the first of many? <laughs> Hopefully it's the first of many. I would like to race him uh, from the line. Awesome. Thank you. Have fun today. We'll see you out there. Awesome. Thank you. Enjoy. Back to you guys. Yeah, now it would be quite an exciting prospect to see Nico Lebron and Conrad Stoltz going head to head one more time. Just to bring you back to the race though, that was uh, Les Mouflons. David Philippe is in third place. Um, we've also got their number team number 25. Let's run down the package there. That's uh, Markov Alessio Zoppi in fourth. And we've got uh, Christoph Hartmann from Germany in the Speed Girls, Mustache Gentleman, in fifth place. So that's going to change quite a bit, I think, uh, when it comes to. So, yeah, so uh, we're heading out onto the, the second lap of that bike course. So a 1.5 kilometer lap and these guys are going to do it twice uh, before heading off onto their sh very short one kilometer run. Whoa! Whoa. And the wind no. is picking up if we disappear because the... <laughs> My pizza's just gone flying, Paul. <laughs> well, it's a very flat, very heavy pizza, but uh, uh, oh. we've got... It's a studio. Yes, we are in a studio. The reality is it's a push-up It's tent. a posh tent, isn't it, Paul? Yeah. Cool, so we're seeing uh, a few more athletes come past our commentary position here. So we've, uh, yeah, we've got a nice long stream of athletes. I can see the organic coach, Alex Borelli of, uh, of France. Uh, looks like she's having a great time. She's, getting, she's here and she's racing with a few of her athletes, I believe. So three, three of our organic coach team. Um, they obviously support their elite athletes yep, and extremely uh, well, but they do have a, a big age group squad as well. Well, they were very vocal last night at the closing ceremony. That was uh, impressive. That each time one of the organic coach athletes was on, on the podium, wow, the place came alive. Uh, Loic Menou from France, an organic coach 
There number we go. one. So we're getting some seven. more athletes on screen. So that's team number two A riding with a stuffed toy on the front of theirs. Number 14 coming through as well. So that actually looks like. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, there was that our our team Taiwanese boys. Guy Dunscombe from Triangles going through. Uh, we have Ian Anderson from the A team has just gone past as well. Number 18 is Gian Marco Rivella from Tri 4X and 6A. That, that is, is Miguel Acosta from Spain. Yeah, the one one arm no beer limit. Uh, no, because they have the team there because uh, the, f the third athlete uh, Jose Abril Cid is one of the para athletes uh, with a lower arm amputation on the left hand side. He raced yesterday just to give you some figures: four hours, thirty nine minutes, and thirteen seconds. No, it's amazing on isn't it? a course like that when you've got a lower arm prosthesis. Here we are. So we this is our relay handover. So how this works? Um, <laughs> It's a bit confusing, but these athletes, I'm sure, will have it dialed. Uh, as the runner completes their run leg, they will run down towards the swim start area into a handover pen, where the athletes will lean across the fence, <coughs> give each other a big high five, and that is the, uh, the indication that the swimmer is to get going and to start their lap. So a lot of fun being had here. The, the spectators are out in force. We've had uh, all the kids races this morning, and we can hear the noise from the, the handover area coming across the, the inlet. There we go. So look, we've got our age groupers are taking this A line with no problems at all. In fact, that's Renel Brennan uh, from the team race off road, making those that log garden look very easy. Yeah, she was uh, sixth in the category yesterday. Yeah, she had a great race. She's not not a fan of cold, <coughs> wet weather. Well, they, we, didn't, we didn't have cold but weather yesterday. Well, it was hard, it was pretty cold and wet in the swim. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I um, think everybody was worried yesterday about the, the torrential rain we had all day Friday, but the course was remarkably unmuddy. There were some sections we, we did see some mud out there, but in general, um, I think everybody came away really surprised. So it looks like we have an interview with Delphine uh, on screen. Oh, maybe not. Just smiling and waving at the camera. Here we go. So okay. we can go down to Ryan, who has Delphine Dalilu uh, from Team Zogs. Delphine, we're going to make this super quick because your teammate is moving right now. But you've been here all weekend as a photographer, videographer. Now you're in the game. How does it feel? It feels fun, fast. It's going to be hard. But yeah, it's just for fun. So I'm very happy to be here with the team, with Alex and Stefano and my other members. So it's going to be fun. Okay, so pasta or pizza after the swim? Pizza. <laughs> uh, except if Michele wants to do pasta again, but pizza will be good. <laughs> Here we go. You heard it first. Pizza. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, Delphine Danilo from Team Zogs. Yeah, and she's been she's basically been working with the uh, the organic coach team this week with uh, their elite athletes covering all of their media content. So she's been running around like crazy during both races, capturing content, creating that, those amazing images for social media. And uh, yeah, and now it seems that the athletes have all stitched her up and have forced her to join in the mixed team relay. So it's uh, I wonder if they're running around so trying to take pictures. Jonas Held in the, in the transition area at the moment, getting his shoes on. Yeah, Taking so his I time. mean the, the no, no transitions, worries. you know, the time spent in transition will be quite key if for those who are taking it seriously today. The the transition is always the same length of time, regardless of the length of the race. So. And he's even putting a race belt on. Okay. Yeah, those are the rules. Yeah. It, it's seriously relaxed, isn't it? Or <laughs> is it relaxed seriousness? I'm not You're sure. Relaxed <laughs> serious. There you go, sir. <coughs> we have a few more athletes. Looks like sec uh, sorry, third and fourth place heading out onto. A bit more pace being injected there. A bit yeah. more pace. Well, it's a very, very short run. It's only one kilometre. So, uh, so here we go. Look, so. That lead at the very front of the race between these these competitive men's teams have uh, extended to 41 seconds. So that's uh, Michael Fuchs from Germany putting his team, Jag de Weizau, or Hunting the Wild Boar. <laughs> it's from the Triathlonverein Burg Lengenfeld. Also für alle Zuschauer, wie soll man eigentlich Jag der Weizau? Aussagen. How am I supposed to pronounce this piece of German dialect? Is it Wildsau? 
Wood Zow? It's definitely Oof. no good asking me, Paul. Oh, so we've got Die Gunscum there. There we go, so Tri Angles coming in. So these guys are... Uh, Where are they said, based? So Guys is from Bristol. They've got a really good, solid crew in Bristol, in southwest England. Uh, there's quite a few guys who have come over to Race 6 Terra World Championships, in, including his teammate in Tri Angles, Graham Mottler. Oh, Graham, yes. Uh, Long-term triathlete. For mm. it, it's funny to see him now. In, he's in the 40 to 44 He's category. the youngest 40 to 40-year-old 40 I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So this is uh, Michael, still heading out. In fact, there's Graham Wadsworth posing on the left-hand side of the road there. You can see him out, probably out warming up. Checking out the competition, seeing what he's got to chase down a little bit later in, in this race. I've just seen uh, Pedro Miranda from Peru uh, in the 40-44 category. Xterra 1 he's racing for. Nice. Oh, it's all for unfolding a bit there, yeah, isn't it? So I think Xterra 1 is one of our, um, how do we say, our, our mixed, you know, our teams that, well, individual athletes who put their hand up and said, I want to do this, this, mm. this track, but I'm travelling by myself. And uh, then, you know, we have the opportunity to put athletes like that in a team with similar characters, uh, but it's a team full of mixed nations, mixed genders, mixed backgrounds. Uh, everyone has a different story in these teams, and I think it's quite cool. <laughs> so <laughs> young Mr. Fox is going to be. Um, uh, he's making. He's looks like he's making hard work of that. That 1K. Obviously, he's uh, you know had a, a big race yesterday, and. Uh, he looks like he's uh, <laughs> happy to work really hard for that, that final one case. So we're going to see this uh, relay handover for the first time, Paul. Yeah, well, so it's he's good. got uh, Loic Menou from France, organic coach uh, one who's powering away, wearing number seven. This is going to be, um, this, this is, is in fact... This is Jerome Vanderbush yeah. coming through for team SH training team. But this is Loic... Menou from France looking very relaxed. He's, yeah, he's made up a lot of places there. Said being chased by Guy Dunscombe. I'm really looking forward to seeing this handover and it gives me an opportunity to tell quite a fun story from the, one of the last relay team's efforts I saw was in uh, at Exterra Oman. And uh, there was a very, very competitive relay team uh, with an ex-Olympic swimmer. Oh. Uh, obviously led out. However, he was so fast that his mountain bike relay partner was still drinking coffee <laughs> and this poor this poor swimmer had to stand around and wait for uh, <laughs> or, uh, the announcer to basically call the uh, the mountain biker's name repeatedly over the PA system to uh, could the uh, mountain biker for, <laughs> for the team relay please make themselves aware and come down to the, to the bike. And it was there for about 20 minutes whilst this guy was enjoying his morning cappuccino. Well, that's the first of the handovers over. There's no coffee involved in this handover. This is now Ludwig Siegel from Germany, seventh in the youngest category. We have the category 15 to 19, but effectively uh, this is an 18-year-old or 19-year-old. This is a Ludwig Siegel. Eighteen minutes on the clock. Yeah, mm. so it's going to be about an hour, 20-minute event, I think. Going to be looking at at the front end. Yeah, they've also got their. Uh, this is from Muck Off. This is um, Alessio Zoppi. Ah, les mouflons. There we go. So it looks like uh, those second, third, fourth, fifth teams. They've all closed that gap a little bit by the end of the bike. I'm not entirely sure how the prizes are going to be awarded because we've got such a mixture of teams. Uh, uh, sport, it doesn't matter, does sport it? Sport wins today, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is a winner. I, I, think for I think it's incredible. You've got the, t the TV cameras have been in place here. They're, they're massive pieces of kit and they've been planted around the short course and up for the, the long course yeah, there yesterday. But they've been out in all weather. They've been left there. Nobody's interfered with them. Um, well, not this that infrastructure. We know about. Well, no, the infrastructure is <laughs> just incredible. And no, it's a, it's a big, a huge, huge shout out to Piper Vision, our our broadcast partner here. They have been amazing all week and have pretty much. They have uh, responded to every single one of our requests that we've made. Look at that! That was a, nice. a, a textbook backstroke turn around a boy. That's the sort of thing that coaches dream of seeing. Here we go. So we have uh, Costa. Leading in, his number belts on back to front. So I'm not sure what team he's from, but he's being chased by a Jerome Toku. There we go, so Jerome Toku chasing him down. That's organic coach two. There you go. 
Uh, Jérôme was uh, 29th in his category yesterday. A very, very tough category. Men 40-44. What a nightmare turning I mean, up to that group. Paul. It is the World Championships, Paul. Uh, you yeah. know, we have the best athletes of all age groups here. You know, so <laughs> it's trying to, you know, I think athletes could be uh, happy with you know, a, a top 10, a top 15, and even just making it to the World Championships is a crazy achievement that we'll, we can all dream of. Well, this is something we brought out yesterday in the commentary on the longer course. It, it isn't a question of you turning up to a race and uh, waiting for the roll down and you were about 20, 30th or whatever. You will get to an Xterra World Championship because you won your category, because you took second or third, or because your finish time was in a very close percentage of the winner. Here we go. So we have Alex Borelli, the, the coach and mastermind between, behind the Organi Goach team. Like I said, does an amazing job looking after their huge team of elite athletes, but also coaching. And also looking after Nico. Oh, yeah, well, putting up with Nico is an enormous task. But uh, but no, huge, amazing job looking after the elite athletes, but also all of the age group. And that's uh, uh, Falco coach Kruger, athletes. just behind, one there of the organisers. Yeah, so Falco from the uh, our partners at Exeter Germany. Great to see them come out to uh, visit us at the World Championships and I said maybe take a, a few tips back. Although those guys don't need any tips, their event is amazing. Oh, that was Zitao in August. Oh, Zitao, yeah, fantastic. That's Alberto Serrano Lozano from Spain. He raced yesterday, 25th in the 30 34 category. There you go, so but it looks like we have our, our second. Right, that's Ludwig Ziegel starting on the exactly. bike. Exactly, heading out onto that bike. So they're already out of the water and heading out onto the bike during the second leg. And that looks like uh, Tori Sigmund from the States. She's racing with the Pure Club, so she's mixing and matching with the Italians. That's Tori Sigmund. She was 16th yesterday in her age group. Um, moving over from the American team, which had to be disbanded because, uh, well, uh, we're not entirely sure why, but <laughs> no, uh, I was, they've I was moved their members around. They've gone to different countries and yeah, different Yeah, I was talking to, to Tori this morning, and she was being an absolute great sport. I think a couple of the, the guys from the American team picked up a little injury after maybe a slip or a fall yesterday. So, uh, We've seen quite Tori, a few bandages. Tori was a, a fantastic sport and just said, oh, I'm here to race. I don't care who with, put me in a team. That's the spirit. That exactly. Really is. So, so like I said, she has joined the Pure Club team. Uh, we're a team of Italians. So there we go. So this is. Oh, it's like getting said, closer. 4B. That is um. Twelve. That's Ma uh, Marcel Spandl aus Österreich. Here we go. We have a leading group. The Germans have caught up. Oh, sorry. That was uh. Was it 22B? Yeah. Okay. 22B. That was Robin Schussler from Germany. 10th in the 20-24 to 24 category. So Robin Schussler catching up closely there with... Oops. <laughs> yeah, I told you it was going to be chaos, Paul. And uh, like I said, I think the further we get into this race, the, uh, the more difficult it is for us to follow the very front of this race. But uh, yeah, I, like I said, I uh, will have a little look at some of the splits and I'll see if I can bring you some info on the all ladies teams, the mixed teams. There we go, so that's 7B. That's uh, Emma Pirodon from France. She was fourth, just missed the podium yesterday, just missing it. <coughs> but uh, at the front there we've got a very close match between uh, team number four, Jag de Wurzau from uh, Triathlonverein Burg Lengenfeld. That's Ludwig Siegel being chased down and probably going to be overtaken by uh, Robin Schussler. But like you said, I think uh, the positions at the moment are largely relevant, irrelevant for two reasons. I think everything, you know, for these guys who are taking it very seriously towards the front. Oh, you got Anna Gay about to jump in. Looks like she's ready in her Spanish national kit. Looking. Not sure what team she is racing for. Let's scroll through my list. There we are. So X Team X Pain. So she's going in second position. Taking over from Elena Gomez. So yeah, that is an all-female team as well. So Ana Celia Cruz del Campo and Monica Carosa Garcia make up that full team. So the lead has changed now. We've got uh, Robin Schussler has just edged in front. No, yes, yes, he's, he has. <laughs> yeah. oh, this, is, this is so <laughs> difficult to keep track of. Where did the overtake table? Now, this bit here, Doug, you've got the, the ramp, you've got like a D to the right. Is that um, an alternative route you could take rather than jumping? 
Exactly, so some athletes might not be comfortable leaving the ground and flying through the air off of these ramps, so there is a little bit of a what we call a bee line, uh, which just avoids, uh, like I said, avoid that extra little bit of risk, gets a little bit of danger. Um, I haven't seen anybody take it yet. Like I said, all of these athletes are great sports and will probably give it a go, to be fair. <laughs> so if in case you can hear that we've just got a uh, we have a lead e motorbike leading the front of the race around just to keep the course clear like I said we have uh, it's a busy busy arena down here with lots of people out for some nice sunshine there we go nice so we have handover. a handover so Anna Gay dives into the water ready to do her 200 meter swim full of beans despite racing yesterday There are some quite big fish in the lake as well. We've seen them. They come to the beach. They come quite close to have a bit of a feed. But they're... I'm not sure what they are, but they're quite big. And it must be a bit disconcerting with the water being so clear. <laughs> you can pretty much see the bottom of this lake. Like, mm. Eve, it's a very, very deep and it's very, very clean. And as a result, you get very big fish. <laughs> Here we go. We've got some... Uh, yeah, we're retelling some tales, have some stories, sharing some high fives. And how are we getting on? Hopefully we can get Ryan down there to maybe have a chat with the, the Spanish lady. So is that Schussler still out in front? It looks like it. Yep. Robin Schussler. So the, the relays you had in Oman at the start of the year, uh, do you have many teams racing there? Uh, I think there were two or three, so I mean that was the traditional relay format where you have one athlete does the swim, one athlete does the bike and one athlete does the run. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity for people to get involved in, in triathlon but without necessarily having to commit to undertake the full thing. Um, which I think is, you know, I think it's a really cool thing to do. Some people, there'll be teams of three, so one person does one each. Others will be teams of two, and maybe someone swims and then runs, and, and you, you take advantage of having a, a strong mountain biker. But no, relays are a great way for people to experience the sport, like I said, without you know, maybe having to worry about going swimming if they're not completely comfortable with that. Um, so I'm a big fan of a relay. There you go, so that is Karen Hepstall down in transition, ready and waiting for a teammate, Renell Brennan. Well, she's got a bit of a story. She came out here and her bike got damaged in transit. Um, she had an initial repair on it and it seemed to be okay, but then she realised there was a, a quite substantial damage. But one of the bike shops in town, no, don't worry, we can rebuild it, not a problem. Because the bike shops out here are really geared up, here in Molveno and in uh, Andalo, they're really geared up to mountain bikers. And it's, it really is, we, we tried to convey this yesterday, it's a paradise for mountain bikers. The hotels really support you. Um, the gondola up to the top, we heard uh, Conrad talking about taking the gondola up. The gondolas will accommodate the bikes and there's a further leg on a, a chairlift which has a special bracket for you to hang your bike on. The courses, the tracks that are laid from the very top down, all designed for you. They drain very well. There are safety features in there. It's a mountain biker's nirvana. It really is. <laughs> exactly. And for those from, the, from Great Britain who uh, have travelled for triathlon, it's nirvana without the cost as well. <laughs> are we allowed to say that? I just did. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, very clever dig there, Paul. I like how you worded that one in there. Yeah, other travel companies are available. Uh, we just see uh, <laughs> available and less money. Uh, we just see uh, <laughs> the yellow bibs there. That's um, Carl Duplessis. The photography we see at the moment with Xterra, it's is one of the things that draws you to the sport. When you look at the way that the images are presented, last night we had the closing um, ceremony. We had the uh, the post production highlights, and that really was incredible. Watching the guys sitting at the table. Uh, editing the, the videos as we were sitting there waiting for the, the, the production to be posted and then they hit return, finish and then it goes up onto the screen. It's that immediate. But what's immediate now is another interview down at the race venue. Okay, we're down here with Pam. She just finished her whole loop. Can you tell us how it was? Yeah, uh, the water was 
very cold. <laughs> so without Neo, it was just with no pressure in the arms. It was cold, but then it was so much fun uh, because I was uh, almost last out of the water, but I catched up in a, in a short track and it's very pushy and great fun. And I, yeah, and the run was, yeah, it was cool. It was a team event and let's see what's coming out. And uh, greetings back home. Uh, so in two weeks time, we have Jagd de Wildsau. It's Deutsche Meisterschaft in Cross Triathlon, uh, Cross Duathlon. And I, yeah, would welcome uh, to have uh, another battle coming up. So this was a perfect warm-up, huh? Yeah, it was a perfect warm-up for in two weeks' time, yeah. It was a great event. How do you feel about being in Moveno, Italy, during the World Championship week? Yeah, it's always Bella Italia. It's uh, Alps, uh, good coffee, good pizza. Uh, the people are quite familiar. It's a, it's a big scenery here. Uh, yeah, and would come back again and, yeah. Well, you deserved some good pizza and some good coffee right now, so go enjoy it, huh? Congrats. Yeah, I'm sure coming back because I have uh, Italian uh, colleagues uh, in Torino and Milano, and they treat me well, so I got used to it. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. Thanks to colleagues. Bye-bye. So that's Pamela Mittermeier Super. from Germany. We now know it's Vizal, the wild pig. Mm. Oh, so Robin Schussler back in T2 now, about to start the run, leading the race. Shoe in the box, shoe in the box, hat in the box, shoes on. Yeah, it's like, uh, there's quite a lot to get right in this transition area. You're trying to do it as fast as you can, your heart rate's through the roof, and uh, then all of a sudden you've got to put all of your kit in a nice, neat box. And this is after racing the full distance yesterday. Yeah, it's and late, partying know. last night. <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot of age groupers on the dance floor last night. And uh, <laughs> let, let, let's just say they weren't holding back. So, uh, I'm quite proud to introduce our next interview we've got Go downstairs ahead. one of another one of my heroes we saw Conrad earlier but I believe Ryan has got uh, the second best French Xterra male athlete uh, with Nico Lebrun okay we got Nico Lebrun here Doug says the second best French Xterra athlete how do you feel about that is that why you're out here today to prove them wrong uh, I, I will try but uh, I'm pretty sure I will fail <laughs> no I think it's uh, it was a uh, we had some uh, some people who were not able to race, so I had the opportunity to you know to to, to take the the place you know of somebody. I'm really happy. This is the first time we are doing that, so like that I can test from the inside you know what we have to to do better. And I think it's also nice to to participate to one of our events. Yeah, so it's pretty casual, pretty fun today, but you must feel pretty locked in, right? You get the itch to go race. Ah, uh, not yet, not yet. I will uh, maybe when I will start, I will be more like focused on the race. Now, uh, as my job is really on the technical side, you know, when I see the boy a little bit moving, I'm still like my eyes are still more on the technical side. But maybe like uh, when I will jump in the water, then I will focus only on my race. So Conrad said that he's going to beat your time. How do you feel about that? Ah, I will try to do my best, but you know, in in our history. He beat me more than I beat him, so I've, I'm afraid it will be the case again today. <laughs> All right, we'll have fun out there. Thanks for the chat. Thank you, guys. Good to hear from Nico. And it's interesting that the short track course we're using today, this is the first time, I believe, in the certainly this year, that we planted the cameras first and then devised the course around it. Yeah, exactly. So the, the, the whole concept of a short track is about showing off our sport to a wider audience. Um, Xterra is amazing that we go to some amazing locations, we visit some very mo remote areas. Uh, unfortunately, it's sometimes very difficult to just show how lucky we are to race in this, that sort of environment. So short track is great because it brings the action right into the centre of town uh, by, like I said, trying to put our sport in front of a wider audience through the medium of moving pitches. And uh, I think we're doing a pretty good job. So far, so good, I think, Paul. I thought, well, yesterday, for the, the, the short track has been great. It's much more technical, it's more exciting to watch. Um, uh, but yesterday, you guys introduced um, the idea of e-bikes on the course. Uh, we had a couple of problems in that we had punctures, we had a crash that smashed the GoPro, but uh, we did get some great images right in the heart of that race. And it showed you the, the difficulty of the course, it showed you how narrow the course was, how twisty and turny the different... Um, levels, the different surfaces that we're racing on, I thought it took it up to a, a really good level. 
Yeah, you'll have no idea how much uh, hair I've lost <laughs> from uh, trying to coordinate all these services. And, it, and it, like I said, it, it's great that we've got some amazing partners who are uh, on board and, and fully bought into this journey with us. So, Robin Schussler there from Team 22 Z Germans, looking quite good out at the front. And there's still, we see our early race leader, Ludwig Ziegel, back there. Yeah, so this is, I think this is third and fourth from the Italian and Austrian teams at the moment. So, just coming in shot. But yeah, I think the uh, Z Germans have taken a bit of a lead here, Paul. Could that change in the next couple of legs, though? Everything is to play for. And um, I honestly have no <coughs> idea what is going to happen. What it is, it, it's every so often there's a twist, there's a turn, there's a climb. It's, it's relentless, isn't it? Exactly. Here we go. <laughs> Successful handover. I think uh, he's given absolutely everything there. Nearly now knocked, this is knocked the referee into the lake. <laughs> well, this is Karl Mell from Estonia. So, um, in the team Z Germans, we have an Estonian. That's Karl Mell, 18th in the 20 to 24 category. Young athlete. They've signed him up from abroad, have they? Perhaps. So, yeah. So, um... Yeah, so we are deep into this Xterra age group mixed team relay, uh, coming towards the end of leg two, but we have got well, Carl athletes Mel, all over the place. Carl Mel from Estonia is the oh. European Xterra champion. Yeah, you know, they went out and uh, put out to tender for, <laughs> for some fast athletes. So, <laughs> you know, they, uh, they're obviously <coughs> taking it that seriously, they're recruiting. Well, that was from the race in Namur with those incredible steps either side of the citadel. So, that's a handover to Jörg Vidal. There you go, now, an almost a minute gap. But I think the, the teams behind, just having a little look at where they came through in transition, we have the top six teams. It's a mixture of uh, male teams and mixed teams, uh, all within two minutes of all that right. lead. So I'm expecting, like you said, Paul, a lot of change, and we're going to see some new faces coming towards the front of this event. So, 56 seconds off there. That's Felix Wagner for Team Jörg Bidzal, and he's now in the water. That's eighth place he had yesterday in the 20 to 24 category. So that's the uh, the Markov team just starting their swim as well. So yeah. that is the... And just see here, that is that's... Um, Costandace Andre Teofil. I'm glad you picked that one up for me. <laughs> so yeah, this is great. I think this is a fairly uh, young team. Um, Alessio Zoppi from the who led us off, uh, or who led that Markov team off, uh, I, th I believe, is the son of Marco Zoppi, one of our, oh, our right. very key people here for this this Xterra World Championship week. He has been running point on pretty much every Italian related service so uh, like I said thanks thanks Mark and your son's doing uh, in justice the, yeah in the speed girls and moustache gentlemen that's uh, Alexandra Rudel from Germany she took the bronze yesterday in the 40 44 category now Jess can spot I don't know whether we'll get another shot of him but I can just see John Heesman from uh, Vittoria tires he's racing for the triangles team ah, yeah. Vittoria has been here representing the brand as, as one of our sponsors of he didn't race the did World he? Championships, no, and he's, he's, a, fresh. he's claiming to be a short track specialist. So <laughs> he's come into this race fresh, but um, he didn't look very fresh, to be fair, running along. I mean, uh, when you're doing, you know, nearly nearly 20 minutes at threshold effort. Well, John was here for the uh, Europeans two years ago, and uh, he was out on the course with a young athlete from Denmark called Jens Emil Sloth Nielsen. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how he got on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's Mou Les Mouflons. Let's see go. who's racing for Les Mouflons. That's going to be Maxime Magot from France, yeah. sixth in his category, 40 40 yeah, 40. It looks like our Oof. front team has hit that bite leg on that third section, so leg three. Heading out on his first lap of the bike. They do two laps, so we're going to get a little bit of uh, traffic and a few lapped athletes, uh, but that doesn't matter. Actually, I've just seen Conrad Stoltz go past our commentary position at a severe rate of knots. He's, uh, he obviously meant business when he said he's going for the fastest short track time of the day. OK, the hand over there, that is now going to see Florian Labarriere from France. Just entering for team number one, that's Asmz Tri 42. It's a team of French and one Spaniard. 
Yeah, oh, nice, uh, nice mix of nations there. Look at this tri suit. That's incredible. What number is that? Twenty. It's number twenty-two D. So this is our the Germans and okay. the third. There we go. So John just handing over to I believe it's Andrew Douglas in the triangles team. Yeah, Andrew Douglas. He was fifteenth, male thirty-five, thirty-nine. Graham Wadsworth is going to take the final leg there. Yeah, is I mean he that's having a coffee now? Do you think? Yeah, he probably is actually. He's probably putting some moisturiser on his <laughs> soft baby face. Uh, the comments <laughs> about uh, Graham, it, we we know he has a portrait in the loft because <laughs> he never ever seems to get any older. No, uh, Graham is uh, like he was telling me he raced the very first uh, X Terror in the UK. Uh, it was at Minehead. Oh crikey, um, let's go um, back. Two th maybe 2002. It was the very first X Terror outside of the US, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, some long history of uh, uh, X Terror Graham and. A well, long history in triathlon. He was one of the uh, key uh, figures in the European Duathlon Championships that took place in Swansea donkeys years ago. Yeah, he's, like I said, he's been around forever. So this is a chaser. So no change at the front. Uh, the two teams who are still battling it out for that first position remain the same. So team number four and team number 22 leading at the moment. That's 22 leading. Um, we have, that will be uh, Karl Mell from Estonia leading with um, with Felix Wagner from Germany chasing. That is um, Team Organic Coach 2, the handover just there from uh, to Lucille Winter from France. Yeah, so I think this is where we might see uh, some different teams come towards the front now as, uh, <coughs> you know, with some of these mixed teams where they've maybe led off with a, uh, a couple of gentlemen to um, give themselves a bit of a lead, a bit of a head start, and then they switch over to a, a female athlete. So that was Karen Hepperstall from Race Off Road going through, being chased by, I think this is the Markov team that's currently in third position so yeah that's Kostan Kostan Dace Andre Theophil there you go so I think that Makov team is just looking to slide past uh, some lap traffic and Karen can maybe jump on the wheel and I know she's incredibly competitive so she will uh, chase that wheel as hard as she can and try and bring the team back forwards again it's going to be interesting when the um, uh, when the race off road hand over to uh, the final athlete, which is Mia Padma. How f uh, her performance yesterday, Doug, she was the Scottish champion. I'm pretty sure she, uh, uh, was she European champion as well, but she's she has really shone this year, hasn't she? Yeah, I mean, Mia is very, very new to, to cross triathlon, like I said, Scottish champion. Um, I think she did that on almost pure talent. And I know she's been working really hard with her, her training this year, but also balancing uh, against studies as well. Yeah. So oh, a, it was a DNF in Namur, but she's part of the Race ah, Off Road yes. Scholarship Program. Perfect. So I think we have a, another special treat. Ryan has got our 2023 World Cup winner, wow. Elise Patiez, down in transition. Elise, hey, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm fine. Better than yesterday. <laughs> well, to be fair, you won the inaugural Xterra World Cup yesterday. That must be good. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's so nice. I'm super happy and super proud about my team, and I'm just enjoying. Speaking of your team, you have coaches out here racing this short track today, right? Yeah. Are you giving them pointers? Are you teaching them how to how to win a race? <laughs> no, because I think my coach knows that uh, she has to do so. <laughs> I'm just here to sharing. <laughs> Are you having fun watching them compete like this? Yeah, it's cool to, to see them uh, like us. So, yeah, it's super nice to, to do this kind of thing for the age group. And I think they, they love uh, also, so it's nice. I think they're having a good time. This has been an amazing season for you, right, professionally. Are you looking forward to next season, pushing it even harder? Yeah, I think uh, I'm... I'm improving, uh, so it's like step by step. Uh, I, I maybe I want to have a, a title because uh, 
now the, the goal uh, was uh, the Leader Cup today. Okay. I mean the, this year and uh, for the next year, yeah, why not a title? I can see it happening. Last question, do you have any bets on who's going to have the fastest swim, bike, run in, your, in the team today? Team Organa Coaches team? Uh, what do you mean about the... Do you guys have internal bets, like maybe you, Marta, Michele, who you think is going to win the swim? Who's going to win the bike? Who's going to win the run? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, they are fast, so maybe Alex? <laughs> Okay, good call. I think so too. <laughs> Have fun the rest of the day, okay? Thank you, YouTube. Thank you. So we've heard it there. She's going to go for the title next year. It could be exciting. Well, I mean, I think it's, you know, you, as an athlete, you're always chasing the next the next thing, you know, and she's ticked off that uh, Xterra World Cup series win. And uh, I think the only thing almost left on her, you know, her career goals now is an Xterra World Championship title. Mm -hmm. Um. We're talking about Mia Padman, and she's she's the Race Off Road Scholarship Program. That, that's something running in the UK, is it? Yeah, it's it's something uh, you know I'm I'm quite proud of. What you know, Nicole, my wife, uh, is probably more responsible for that, and I have to thank her for for picking up the baton when uh, I get a little bit busy with my day job. Uh, but the idea was basically to help support some young guys get across into Europe and to race some exteriors. Obviously, this was pre. Xterra Western Park in the UK where the only way to get top level off-road experience was to get on a plane and go which if you are a you know a student an under 23 athlete uh, you maybe don't have the necessary funds to do that so it was a, a way to help you know kind of I guess introduce more people uh, to the beauty of Xterra racing and I said we have to give a big big uh, shout out to Xterra um, you know a big supporter of that program and and like I said, I've been a massive help, kind of helping to expose these athletes to races like this. And I have to say, the, um, the, the they were very vocal in their support in the short track on Thursday, hmm. and they were very vocal last night celebrating. So it's, it's a good presence. But it's not just being vocal, they're actually putting in some good performances now as well. Exactly. Like I said, the, the whole point of the scholarship is to give these guys a good experience. You know, so a, a, a single race result is not just... Uh, the experience. You need to experience the whole lot, and that's the uh, the fun times. So we so go that's, with uh, Alexandra Rudel. They're just having a bit of a struggle yeah, getting just up. Just getting there. caught out in the wrong gear, but she'll be back on. There you go. So yeah. she's immediately back on the bike and away and pedaling. So nice recovery there. We heard this from uh, Pauline V. She said, if you get to the wrong point, if you start to try and change your gear, you're going to lose the chain. Yeah, it's a very, very. It doesn't look very technical on the screen, but actually, it's incredibly difficult that section. You go from a very slow, off-camera turn into the bottom of it, and then it's incredibly steep. I can, you can barely walk up it. So uh, yeah, these guys are all, you know, the, the pros made it look very easy on Thursday, but these guys are giving it a really, really good go, and it's great to see them, you know, the skills on show. Mm -hmm. Now, I think um, for some people watching this. The job of being on the motorcycle in front, I've watched these guys' faces when they come down off the hills, having led the, uh, the, the course. They are buzzing, <laughs> absolutely it's buzzing. It's the one day of the year you can take a motorbike on the trails and not get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think the, you know, these guys are important. Um, you know, they go, they travel ahead of the race. Um, it's safety, basically. Yeah, and exactly. But I mean, the big push we've done for this year is to switch to e-motos. So uh, you won't hear them coming. Um, but it's just that little bit more environmentally friendly. Uh, it's a little bit nicer for the athletes. They don't have, you know, a two-stroke engine spewing fumes out in front of them. And, you know, it makes a real big difference to, um, you know, the overall enjoyment of those athletes who find themselves well, lucky enough to be around the front of the race where the motos are. So into transition now, the final part, which is going to be the run, and this is Karl Mel, Estonia, European Xterra champion. Didn't quite go his way yesterday for the Worlds. Where did he end up in the end? We got uh, it was 18th. Um, not really. It must have been. There must have been a problem out there. Yeah, I mean that's a you know an incredibly competitive age group again. I mean everything is incredibly competitive age group, but. We um, did see quite a few people coming back. But yesterday there was uh, one athlete who cycled, I don't know how far, but with his seat post attached to his seat, tucked into the back of his uniform. 
Yeah, he'd obviously had some sort of mechanical, maybe his seat pin or his seat collar had failed, so mm -hmm. rather than uh, discard equipment and, and effectively litter on the course, he, he picked up his broken parts of his bike, yeah. put them in the back of his dry suit, and uh, had pretty much rode the second lap entirely stood up, which I can only think <laughs> must have been uh, his, qu his quad quads, muscles yeah. must be absolutely killing him this morning. Felix Wagner there from tran uh, in transition, just getting the shoes on, making sure all the equipment's in the box, doesn't want to have any penalties from the... Uh, uh, very vigilant officials there. Race number one, that's Felix Wagner in second place for Jan de Vizal. He's got a bit of time to make up. That 56 seconds has grown probably to about a minute and ten, I think. Yeah, again, like I said, it's not really, uh, you know, these guys are still racing and being competitive, but I think uh, everyone is here just to have a bit of fun today. So whilst there will be a winner, um, and we will be acknowledging the fastest male mixed and female teams. Mm -hmm. um, really, like I said, this is a continuation of our uh, Xterra family and our spirit. I think the, the schedule you've got this time around, we had the uh, short track for the elite invitation only on the Thursday, which was well attended by lots and lots of age groupers who'd been to the registration. They then had a chance to see this wonderful show, which was for points and prize money. Then we had a day off to allow the rain and then we have the big race on the Saturday. And now, having this format, um, this time of the day, all the kids' races are in the morning, so it really has worked well. And I thought Alize was, uh, was spot on there, saying it's good to see the age groupers racing like us. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, a big shout out to, you know, Alize. She doesn't have to come down and watch these age groupers. She's come down because she'd like to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and Alize's right on. You know, age groupers are the, the beating heart of our sport, and we need to recognise and kind of thank them by like giving them an opportunity to come and get involved in something new. And, you know, and uh, yeah, so it looks like those flags, Paul, are starting mm. to uh, move around a little bit. So It's uh, we're just changed it. direction completely. The, uh, the flags were, f were going the other way. They were coming from the south. The wind was coming from the south. It's now coming from the north. As the sun has risen, it's created a bit of a draw on the, on the, on the wind. But that uh, is still a, a solid performance there from our athlete from Estonia. That's Carl Mell uh, taking his team, number 22, the Germans, to the final leg. And that will be for Philipp Morgenweg. In the 25-29 category. Yeah, we're starting to, like I said, our, our team Muckoff have just come off of the bike as well. So they are in third place, but they have lost quite a lot of time on that last, well, that'll be on that Emma, last leg. Emma Festi from Italy, she'll be taking the final leg for Muckoff. There we go. So we might see Team Muckoff just drop back down through the standings. Maybe they've used their fastest, strongest athletes on those first two legs. Watch out for the uh, Team Zogs, because there's a, an athlete in the third place, or third leg there, who won the um, crazy, crazy run in the Czech Republic race. <laughs> yeah, good old Stefano Davidite. So uh, Stefano is another coach with uh, Team Organic Coach, actually. So, um, And he is incredibly fast. You know, we in, there was a, an amazing trail five-kilometer run on the Friday in the Czech Republic uh, called Herbie's Trail Run. To, uh, to honour a key member of the Exterra Czech uh, organising team who unfortunately lost his life in Afghanistan. And uh, it is supposed to be a bit like this short track pool. It's, it's supposed to be a lot of fun. Everyone it comes together and, and kind of just celebrates a good cause. And um, Stefano took it very, very seriously and proceeded to destroy everybody by about five minutes. <laughs> so <laughs> he has, uh, there's definitely some competitive spirit in there and um, you know, so I'm look actually quite looking forward to seeing how fast he goes. He might go after Conrad and Nico Lebrun's fastest lap time. So, uh, Philip Morgenweg here, really, really storming there. Um, th this is an athlete from the previous wave, uh, which is going to be overtaken fairly soon. Look at the colour of the water there. There's no filters being used here. It really is that colour. And later in the day, it goes to a gorgeous blue. When we arrived here on Tuesday, it was dead flat. There was no, it was very high pressure, dead flat uh, surface. And now, look at it, beautiful. Yeah, it's probably one of the nicest places you can come and open water swim. It's 
it, you know, there's no worrying about the water quality. There's no real worry about the water temperature. It's just a fantastic place to, uh, to have a swim. So we've now got uh, athlete 4C. That's going to be Felix Wagner handing over there to Martin Reinstein from Germany. That's in the male 35-39 category. So we're going to be joined by somebody very, very shortly who has, without any shadow of a doubt, I'm not going to big him up here at all. I'm saying I'm talking the truth. Were it not for some of the images that we see on all of the social media pages, and in particular on the um, Next Terra Planet page, we wouldn't have the sport at this level. Carl Duplessis, it's wonderful to see you here at last sitting down because you've been running everywhere. The images you've been able to capture today, yesterday, and on Thursday, uh, how happy are you with them? Um, yeah, thank you, Paul. It's been uh, it's been a great week so far. Um, sorry, Doug. There we go. We can hear you probably now. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it's been a you know we were a bit worried about the weather coming into this week, but overall it's been amazing and. It's almost like rugby, isn't it? It's the team around you. So <laughs> for for once, this is I think the first ever Xterra where I've you know been able to sit down for five seconds because I've got a fantastic team. Of, you know, Sammy, Joe, Chris, uh, Alicia, um, you know, and all the Italian guys, Fabrizio, Alberto, all the guys are mm. out there running around on all the yellow vests, trying to stay out of the what's way the, of live pictures. What's the atmosphere like uh, in the thick of it down here with the age groupers? Well, this this is a little bit less intense than the short track on Thursday. Um, a bit more, you know, sketchy lines being taken. But overall, I think the, the relaxation and the, the atmosphere is very positive. Um, you know, the nerves are all gone from the big show from yesterday. Everybody's here just, just to have fun. Um, and I think the mood is really, really great. It's, you know, to still have 100 athletes competing the day after World Championship, it's, I think it's fantastic. And uh, I, I think, Hopefully in the faces it will show that people are having a great time today rather than the agony they went through on a four, five, six hour race yesterday. So I think uh, overall it's been a great success so far. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm sure people are really kind of keen to hear, like, what's the, what's the process for your photography team? You know, the one thing that really stands out from your images is that you capture people's proper emotions. It's very easy to take a picture of someone swimming, cycling or running, but taking a picture in a way that conveys the, the beauty of the location where they are, the, the effort and the passion that that athlete has for the sport. You know, what, is there a process? Is there something special? Or is it just, you know, you, your guys have just got such a keen eye for the right, the right picture? I think it's really a mix of both. You know, I'd say let's, you know, take it a third at a time. You know, yes, the photography is important. And, you know, we, you know, we work hard to, to give people the, the best possible images and athletes' memories that they can cherish for the rest of their lives. But then the other 30% is the athletes and the other 30% is the venue. Um, and we've, you know, working in the Xterra environment and the Xterra family for quite a few years now, the places we get to go does help us quite a bit to, you know, to produce these great images. And um, again, having a great team, um, it's not just one person, everybody comes together. And then without the athletes, we would not have jobs. So, you know, they are, they are the ones that we try and focus on and you know if, as long as we can you know provide them with images and you know everybody else to else uh, out there attract them to the sport then that makes us happier than you know it's, than anything it, else. It, the image does sell the sport and it sells it, it it sets this sport of triathlon this particular variety of triathlon it sets it head and shoulders above other competitors within the sport other competitors other other formats it just seems to be there's a wow factor and i think if you if you take a, a and a gallery of photography, you can pick out the Xterra images because they're just so fantastic. And we've been lucky, so lucky with the weather. I mean, on, on Friday, you, you and your team must have been thinking, oh no, we've come all this way. Not just all the way by traveling, but the whole year building up to Mulvano, and we've got a torrential downpour. And yep. then on race day, the sun was there. It's the classic thing, bringing the umbrella, right? And then yeah. it won't rain. So we've got our rain covers packed and I, I have my you know, waterproof boots on and we were ready to go for, for torrential conditions. And yeah, we, we've been lucky and unlucky in some circumstances, but uh, yeah, this week has been really amazing. It's been cold, but other than that, yeah, we've had the sunshine. And but to see not, these guys having so much fun today is, yeah. is amazing. It's not just a holiday. I know you, you work your team very hard. Um, in fact, Joe, you worked him so hard in Namur. He cycled with the pros up that huge hill and with a GoPro on his chest 
and you used a second and a half of that image. He, he worked himself into a state and you used just a second and a half, but wow, what a second and a half it was. Yeah, it's, I guess it's, you know, we, we try to be at the right place at the right time and you know, it takes a little bit of experience to, to just get the right people. Um, and, you know, I've been quite lucky to, to have a great team to work with um, over, the, over the years. So well, back, back, back to the, the action. I was going to say, so, yeah, thank, I mean, thanks for joining I'm, us, Carl. I know you've uh, got places to be and photos to take. But, um, yeah, like I said, a, a massive thank you from the whole of the Xterra community and, and family for everything that you guys do to, uh, like I said, give these athletes something to post on social media to show their friends and family about their huge achievement this weekend. Yeah, no, it's been a it's been a pleasure, and you know, it's all we keep banging on about the Xterra family, but you know that's truly the case, and I I can only return the the thank you to the team and all the athletes who give us the opportunity to do this. Okay, so from us in the studio, we can go right back down into the real excitement down at the race venue. Okay, guys, we're here with Team Triangles, and these three just finished. You guys want to just go through your names and what it means to be racing here today and in Mulvano this whole weekend? Yeah, so my name's Guy Dunscombe. I'm from Bristol in the UK, and it's just stunning here. Um, the course is amazing, and the weather's delivered, and just fantastic racing. Hi, I'm uh, John Heesman from uh, Surrey. Um, yeah, we had a great relay today. It was really good fun. It's such a nice format to have, like, you know, as a team, as age groupers and stuff, and uh, in such a great setting. It's so cool. Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Andy Douglas. Um, I'm really excited to do the team relay, actually, because we did the full triathlon yesterday, and it's so fun to do it as a team and give it like, an all-out effort. And I'm still knackered. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I bet you're all knackered. Have you guys checked the Garmin's to see who got the fastest splits? Not yet, no. <laughs> I, think, I think we've got a few um, points uh, kind of uh, based on our, um, our splits later, so we'll have to uh, get, get around the table with a few beers and work out who, who won which legs. Yeah. Sounds like a good time. Pizza and beers later on. Perfect cap to the weekend. What do you think? Yeah, it's just fun. It's blooming hard, though, you know. On tired legs from yesterday, that bike course is all up and down, really spiky, and it really took it out of you. Yeah, well, congratulations, everybody. Hope you had fun today, and uh, you got one more coming through, right? Yeah. He's out there now racing, so, yeah, well, we're trying to hopefully squeeze the podium, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for a great event. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Good luck. So, that's Team Triangles. Um, there's a yeah, sort of a hint there, Doug, that perhaps Mixed Relay should be on the programme for Western Park. Yeah, <laughs> Doug could be under any more pressure than, than we already are under. For, uh, no, I, like I said, I, I love this Mixed Breed team format. And uh, like I said, I think the athletes just really appreciate the opportunity to do something different, to, you know, to try a new format. Um, you know, and I guess we can just say thank you to them for stepping up and having a go. When we when we first sort of scribbled this idea on the back of an envelope in in the bar after a race, uh, we had no idea what the sort of the reception would be. So it's great that uh, everybody has kind of pitched in. Well, I think 100 plus athletes uh, shows that it was the right decision. Yeah, exactly. And just getting, I think we're getting a nice little was drone that? shot here. Well, that was Sam Girling going through. Uh, the shot there for Team Race Off Road. Uh, he top is, 10, uh, isn't he? Yeah, he's doing well. I think he's top 10 in his age group. Um, I'm just going to see. Yeah, so Sam is on leg three, so they are a little bit way down the, uh, the overall standings, but I'm sure they'll be, be having fun. Um, so I've just j jumped on the splits pool. Obviously, we were chatting through with Carl. Uh, we kind of missed that hand, that swim hand over to the final leg, but the Germans are out in front. Uh, followed by, or you can pronounce that one, Jag de Winzu, the was that the... Jag de Winzau. There you go. Uh, they're in second place, a minute and 13 back, so they're actually making a bit of time up. Uh, Muckoff oh. are in third, SH, tr uh, SH Training Team are in fourth place, and Team Triangles, who we just saw on the interview there, uh, Graham Wadsworth heads out onto that final leg in fifth place. Okay, so there's Anti, uh, Anthony Cotier from France in SH training team with handing over to da David Kourou. Oh, so we're just seeing another athlete struggling on that very, very steep climb. Came into it in a massive gear at full speed and uh, just <laughs> ran out of steam halfway up. Is that Graham Wadsworth? No, uh, no, this is this number 22. Ah, so that so is the, the Germans. I that's think. Philip Morgenbeck. Exactly. So Philip is one of the race organisers. Uh, no, sorry, that's I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong German team. So, but no, Philip is doing a great job here. He's making that log garden look very easy, breezing through these turns. And someone told him it's supposed to be hard. 
<laughs> he looks like he's just, he's cruising. He's like uh, just cruising behind that motorbike, making it look very easy. So that handover for the third team, you say it was uh, Mark Off, which will be Emma Festa, she's now in the water, uh, possibly out on the bike. She was 11th yesterday in the fifth in the category yep, 20 this is her on the screen as we there talk you about go. it. So, so it's third place. So yeah, so Emma navigating her way around these uh, quite tight, awkward off-camber turns, and then you hand this, this right-hand turn, drop through the wood, and then back down onto that beach. So it's it's very awkward. And that's quite a snappy little drop, isn't it? There's a rock, there's a there's a drop, there's rocks. That's Christina Wild uh so Christina Herbst, sorry the yeah, blue you hair can there. Spot her amazing blue hair pretty much anywhere on this race course. Being chased down by I can't think catch the number on that one, but we'll we'll go back to it. That was an Italian team. I think it could have been one of the members from that pure team. Here we go. See if you can catch the name on the suit pool. Uh, I missed that one. Right. Yeah, it could be Petter Davide. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, the 9C. But we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll get another shot and we'll be able to confirm that name. Because we've got the... Um we got the two David, uh, the two Petters. There's Davide <laughs> and we've got uh, Michael. We go. So this is this is Graham Wadsworth from that dream. Trying to look at him going through those corners. He's pushing hard. I think he's under some serious pressure from his teammates now to uh, to try and turn that fifth place into a podium. So yeah, Graham giving it some some beans. But here we go. He's, he's still got a little bit of work to do if he wants to catch up these guys. This is our race leader from the Germans. Uh, this is Philip, so he's going to, by the looks of it, take a little healthy lead into that final run leg. Mm, uh, checking the penalty board, hopefully there'll be no penalties <laughs> up there. No, no, I think uh, maybe, maybe it'll be a drinking penalty or something like that oh, today. Do, do, I think do. it'll be. So there we go. So yeah, this is yeah, the Speed Girls and Moustache Gentlemen coming through. It's in team number 12. And that will be... Anya Elsler. I'm oh, sorry, that's actually going to be Emile Chavez. I think they have just done a last minute switch. Okay, we, well, so we had Anya Elsa from Germany. She was second in her uh, category. So I think Anya Alexander has Wood. done a very last minute switch. So I think that's actually Amelia Chavez. Ah. Yeah, so we were we were switching teams and changing names around right up until the <laughs> up until the start. So uh, ap apologies if we have got called any of the athletes' names wrong, but I did promise it would be Kale. So yes, yeah, so Philip is looking pretty good as he heads across the grass next to the beach here at Lake Malvino. It looks full of running. I think the guys are going to have a, a bit of a work cut out if they want to catch this. That's uh, pretty much secured. I think number one. Number two is looking as if it's still solidly in the hands of Martin Reinstein. Okay, some, some lovely... Oh, his running style is very nice, isn't oh, it? I was say, we're getting some lovely these drone shots, kind of tracking the athletes along. Hopefully not going to get <coughs> too affected by the wind and, and disappear off into the mountains somewhere. We're collecting drones from the Dolomites for weeks. So the, the, com the combination we had uh, yesterday for the, for the drone shots, the static camera shots, and then the e-bikes, all of that coming together, it really did work to give the best images we could possibly get. I've just seen Nico Le Bruin coming into transition <coughs> there. Like I said, he's successfully managed not to drown in the swim, so he's having a, a pretty good race so far. He'll be on onto the bike, and uh, you know, Nico is sneaky fit. Every time I've gone for a little bike ride or a run with him this week, he's, he's half-wheeled or half-stepped me the entire way. And uh, the other guy is still in pretty good shape, despite being uh, quite busy running our technical director. Direct running the technical direction of the Xterra World Championships this week, but he is still in pretty good shape. So, back out the front, that is... Yes, and that is Philip from the Germans just coming through. <coughs> he looks like he's just overtaking a, a couple of other athletes who are 
possibly a, 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 leg behind. a leg behind at the moment. So I saw Sam Gerling uh, in there. So Sam is an incredibly fast runner, so you, we might even see him just run back up to Philip, to be honest. I think there's a big, big ask. A minute and a minute and twelve behind on a one kilometre. Oh, course. I mean, just just catch up and unlap ah. themselves. <coughs> so Martin Reinstein, second place, and then right all the way down the l numbers, we have the final team, uh, which is Emma Fester for Muck Off. Looking as if that will be the first three teams um, of course the, the teams are completely mixed up when we've got some with men some with women some yeah it's, it's gonna be interesting for the um, the results guys pulling the stats together I think <laughs> yeah there we go he's giving a good point out to the camera there and I think as he heads down towards the finish line um, he knows exactly <laughs> it's like you said these guys have obviously taken it extremely seriously and they have at least delivered like I said this is the Germans are making their way down to the finish line. Uh, they will turn right at the split instead of carrying on down towards that swim handover. There you go, I told you Sam Gerling would uh, unlap unlap himself. Yeah, he has there you go, let's see if he gets a little bit nervous. And uh, oh, I think I think uh, Philip knows that uh, Sam is a full full leg behind as he hands over to Mia Padamo. Did you speak to Sam yesterday? How was his race? Yeah, he had a great one. His first experience for next Terra World Championships. So, um, you know, I think the first time you come to an event like this, it can be a little bit overwhelming. You just see the, um, the fatigue beginning oh, to kick <laughs> he's in. He's had there. a little wobble mm. as he goes up those steps. There you go. So Sam will basically cross over the bridge and Philip will go underneath the bridge. There we go, mm -hmm. celebrating his team's win. There we go. Oh, so he look collects at this. his teammates. Uh, with 100 metres to go. We asked if this could happen, and it's happened. This is great. This is a fantastic <laughs> image. This is the relay team. This is the relay team finish you want to see. There we go. So wow. the Germans cross the line to take first place, and obviously the all-male team is not our only first place finishers today, but great job, guys. I think that looks brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Of course, and they'll be there. double-sided finish take. Thank you very much. <laughs> I do like that as well. Exactly. There we go. Think of everything, you see. So yeah, there you go, the team of Jonas Held, Robin Schulzer, Carl Mel, Philip Morganwick. Did a great job guys, thank you for your efforts today. So team number four will be very bad. <laughs> Here we go, so this is the second place team coming through, this is the name I cannot pronounce. This is Jan de Weizau from Triathlon for Ein Burg Lengenfeld, made up of Michael Fuchs, uh, Ludwig Siegel, Felix Wagner, and Martin Reinstein. Again, an all male team. Yeah, so these guys will be, could be happy with second place in this category. Like I said, the first time we've ever done an Xterra age group short track mixed team relay. It's a bit of a mouthful, but uh, no, these guys have uh, given us a pretty good competitive race today. I said it started with an early lead in the beginning of the race before the Germans came flying past halfway through the race. But let's see if he picks up his teammates as he turns right and heads towards the finishing arch. Yeah, that looked really good, getting the, the whole team together to cross the finish line. There we go. So there we go. So the rest yep. of his teammates are waiting for him, which is pretty cool. <laughs> This is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And it's a great photograph for the team. Yeah, no, this is, these are like memories. Like I said these guys would have shared a journey to get to the Xterra World Championships. And uh, like I said, it's such a nice way to finish the weekend and and uh, kind of, yeah, just uh, close it off with a really, really good positive experience. There we go, so high fives all round between the two first teams. So the final, or well the third team, uh, normally we'd have gold, silver and bronze, but this is going to be a, a whole range of things. Uh, the team Makov, wearing number 25, Alessio Zoppi, Enea Nicolo Tofanetti, Costandacci, Andre Teofil and Emma Festa. That should be our next team to make their way down to the finish line. Yes, yeah, so that will be our first mixed team to finish. So yeah, the team of Makov. Like I said, Makov, one of our sponsors here at the Xterra World Championships 2023. Um, 
I'm not convinced the <laughs> the Markov team is made up of any employees of Markov. I think they're all <laughs> there were some serious hot shots uh, of some athletes that they've roped in to represent the brand. But you know that's absolutely fine. It's nice to uh, you know to give those guys a bit of airtime. And like I said, and, uh, I will look forward to seeing uh, them finish off the job this morning. Sorry, this morning, this afternoon. It's been a very long day. So yes, yeah, so that will be Emma Fester, which is quite nice. Like I said, the, uh, the the mixed team, they've opened with their three male athletes and they'll finish with their female, giving her the spoils of victory. OK, we're going to go down to the finish area because we're going to have a chat with some of the winners. Ryan, are you ready for them? I am ready. We are here down with the winners of the first ever short track team relay, Z Germans. Can you guys go through, just tell us your names and uh, how it was today? Yeah, my name is Carl. It was definitely hard for the lungs, but uh, was a really fun format and would like to do it anytime again. Yeah, I'm Robin. Uh, I think the, the format was quite awesome. Uh, a really hard race, really fast racing. I like it. Uh, my name is Philip, and it's a, it was a hard race. Yeah, I'm Jonas, and yeah, it's the toughest short race I've ever raced. How do you guys feel about this whole week being here in Italy, taking part in the World Championship? Has it been a special time for you all? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's beautiful here between the mountains and with the lake. It's been raining quite a lot. I, I didn't expect that, but uh, it's been great, yeah. Yeah, as well, I hope for it to be a little bit warmer. But uh, the scenery was awesome, and I really liked the race in the venue. Awesome. Ja, ich spreche jetzt mal auf Deutsch. Äh, also es war mein zweites Mal hier in Moveno, und es war echt top dieses Mal, und man kann nichts aussetzen. Yeah, it was my first time here. Yesterday I did not finish, but today the weather is a little bit better, and I'm feeling a little bit better too. So uh, yeah, the sun is coming out. The water was really cold but yeah so what it was nice awesome well you guys deserve a big celebration tonight you're gonna go have some fun of course yeah of course, <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. all right thank you guys have fun that uh, was great and that was uh, philip who suddenly decided to go in german they're saying this is second time here and it was really really good so this is <coughs> good a nice tracking shot here of graham wadsworth just bringing things home for the triangles i'm not sure on his position uh he will be heading towards the finish line so we will switch over as soon as we can so there you go uh, that yeah, would be uh, it's actually did he is he caught them up yeah, it looks like they are at the Ooh. end of transition. Graham headed out in third place, so we are just waiting to see what the finish split is. Well, that is impressive. It really is, because it, that would suggest they've pushed uh, the Markov team. Yeah, the Markov team, like I said, they uh, they were finishing with their, <coughs> their female leg of the mixed team uh, category. Uh, so they look like they've just slipped down into sixth place, but I think they're still leading that that category. So we go right. Uh, All right, triangles need to get themselves organised because they didn't cross the line together. <laughs> <laughs> no, they That's were probably uh, already in the bar. Uh, That's yeah. probably well, they were already so getting the first drinks in. I think. Guy Dunscombe, Great Britain. John Heesman, Great Britain. Uh, Matt Andrew Douglas and Graham Wadsworth, all from Great Britain. Yeah, perfect. So we have uh, no, athlete number five D. Coming through, so that is Guillaume Gauthier from Les Mufflons. So they headed out on to that run leg uh, in fourth place. So they are not too far behind. Okay, Les, les Mufflons, uh, it's um, like a mountain goat. The mountain goat. Very apt name, I think, for Exterra racing. So I think we also had... That is going to be uh, David Couveau from France in the 50-54 category. Yeah, he's moving along nicely, like I said. Uh, he's, yeah, not far from the finish. There we go, it's that is 1D heading through, uh, a number on upside down. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, going to be Mikel Angel Benitez Perez uh, from Amiz Tri 42. So those guys are having a, uh, a pretty good day out, heading towards the finish. Cool, you can see the legs are beginning to hurt a bit there. As a mountain goat, uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Gautier, I've never seen a mountain goat go over a wooden bridge before. 
<laughs> there you go. So on, he. I so should say that on the way down here, there was a mountain goat eating grass on the side of the motorway. <laughs> There you go. Where well, has he found his teammates? There yeah. you go. No, he's got Chun. <laughs> Who needs a teammate when you have Chun? There we go. Maybe the uh, the official. There we go. You can see his. You can see some of the team. There they are. They're welcoming him at the finish line. Nice. Yeah, we need to work on the choreography. There we go. Is that your team five? So that is your first, actually. That is your first mixed team. Oh, that was a Manon Grégis from France. She's a physio, and she works as a physio not just for athletes, but also for musicians. So that was the team Les Mouflons, David Philippe, Manon Grégis, uh, Maxime Magot, and Guillaume Gauthier. <coughs> Here we go. We've got some more finishes coming down. Team number 11. That's uh, SH training team. Jérôme from the bus, France. Uh, Simon Albrain, uh, also from France. Anthony Cotier and David Corot. Not a bad performance, eh? No, like I said, uh, a, a, you know, a, a real. <laughs> they've been very really consistent real across the whole day, <coughs> and, and like I said, I, I think, I think uh, David was quite happy to see the finishing line there. So this is the Markov team coming in, I think. Yes, yep. that's it. Yeah. Closely chased by... Uh, actually, that could be a lapped athlete, but they'll still be heading out. I said we've got a little bit of... Um, well, that's, uh, well that, that could be either Alexandre Rudel or Anja Elsa or the other athlete <laughs> who jumped in. There we go. So there we go. So the Markov athlete just finishing through. And, uh, yeah, he's ready for a nap, I think. <laughs> yeah, you can see on, uh, on his face. Here we go. So this is the moustache team, 25, coming across the line. Oh, sorry, that was the muck-off. There's been a change of... There we go. Let me just get my head around this now. OK, here we've got uh, Team 12. This is potentially um, the Speed Girls and Moustache Gentlemen, um, which may have Christoph Hartmann, Marcel Spandl, uh, Alexandra Rudel, and Anja Elsa, a mixture of German and Austrian athletes. Possibly a name change in there at the last minute. That will be Christoph Hartmann wearing A. We think 12D, is that Anja Elsa? Or is it uh, the last so minute name change? Yes, this was the last minute name change. Ah. So. Because Alexandra Rudel was a bronze medalist yesterday in the 40-44 category, and Anya, she, if she did race, she was a silver medalist yesterday in the 30-34. Yes, so I think Anya obviously had a good race, but <coughs> I believe we may have swipped, swapped in Amelia Chavez for that. So, ah. so like I said, some races maybe didn't go totally to plan yesterday, so that maybe would have affected uh, some, a few changes in the teams today, which... Uh, Hopefully we have the most up-to-date list, but things change very quickly, don't they, Paul, the next era? <laughs> there we go. So this is the Z Germans team celebrating their, their victory in the male category. So that goes home. That goes to their club, their sponsors, their bosses. Fantastic. I don't think my boss would care particularly much if, <laughs> if I did very well at a race. But uh, no, like I said, a fantastic achievement and, and what a way to round up their weekend of racing. And a big shout out, we've got all around the course, there, if, you've been, if, you are, if you have been out here walking around supporting your family and friends, You'll have seen the little exterra signs on fences, on trees, uh, attached to rocks, and it says volunteer position. Here we go. So this is the Exterra Germany team just coming into the finish line. So I believe, there we go, I believe two of them may have done the entire race as a pair rather than four. So, so I know they were, effect, they were affected by uh, a, a late last minute dropout. Oh yeah, because we originally it was going to be Falco Kruger, uh, Philipp Anzorga, Patrick Mix, and then Francisco Ruiz Milan from Colombia, but that might have changed. And <coughs> yes, we have Ranieri Dorella just on screen, heading towards into the finish, so hopefully he will pick up his Italian teammates. So I 
It's a Ford team. It does exactly what it says on the uh, tin, an Italian team of four. Here we go. So he's, he's welcomed over the finish line by his teammates. And that would be uh, Michele <laughs> Bellemo, uh, Massimiliano Donati, Alessandro De Cilia, and Ranieri Dorella. And he was in the 60 64 category. Wow. Sixth. Yeah, so we're talking about, we haven't talked enough about the volunteers because those people have been out there all day yesterday and the today and of course on the uh, the uh, short track a big shout out to the volunteers who've made this all come together so nicely yeah absolutely paul like i said we um we couldn't do it volunteers are <laughs> oh. go. so it looks like we have the czech team to d coming across the yeah. line so the czech republic age group team that's lukas peter uh, jana vorlichkova uh, veronica vlatskova and jan debna yeah it's uh, an amazing race by these guys I said they look very happy to be at the finish line together. There we go, big group hug. Fantastic. And a lot of these athletes here have qualified at the two Czech races, the big ones. Here we go, so team number seven, that is the Hogani Coach One team. Oh, so, is and Nico's yeah. finished. Yeah, there we go, so. That was uh, Loic Menot, uh, Emma Pirodon, <laughs> uh, Sarah Bietz, and Nico Lebrun. There we go, so like I said, congratulations, Guy. <laughs> team Hogani Coach getting the job done. Go. Nico doesn't look in such bad shape, really, does he? How many times was he world champion? Uh, he only won world championship once. Oh. Uh, but 25 career victories in Cross Exterra, so no slouch in his day. And this is Team 8, which is the organic catch 2. Jérôme Tocou from France, Manuel Giordano from France, and Lucille Winter and Laurent Beuzebock. And just coming in behind them was the team of the Mitfit, Misfits with Olaf Borowski uh, bringing them home. So that was the team of Jack Bryson, Conrad Stoltz, Philip Mayer and of course Olaf Borowski. So uh, yeah, so Nico Lebrun managed to just edge out Conrad Stoltz Ooh. one last time. There might be a fine in the bar later. <laughs> Try 4X, this is Gianmarco Rivella, Luca Corbetto, Elisa Nardi and Walter Roda. Oh, they look very happy. That ground bike team, they are, uh, yeah, big supporters of one of our big elite athletes, Sandra Meyerhofer. So I'm sure she's on the sideline somewhere cheering these guys on. As they were cheering her on yesterday. Exactly. Well, well, well I mean, they, they were, were racing. They were in the race. So. <laughs> Didn't quite catch the number of, uh, of this French athlete. We're heading down towards the finish. But we have team number 16 coming in. This is the A team. Uh, Ian Anderson, Britta Anderson, the uh, mother and father of Scott Anderson, are one of our favourite elite athletes. Nick Sowerby and Chris McDonald. Chris McDonald from New Zealand. Here we go. So, getting a confirmation of our top 10. Obviously, there is a bit of a mix in there between our, our males, our mixed teams, and our female teams. Um, but, yeah. Like congratulations to all teams so far. So 25 teams we had. That's, a, that's 100 athletes. It's, it's incredible to think you've, you've committed yourself to a massive, massive race yesterday. And now you're going to have a, a short, fast, in the red, all the way around. This is Team Zog. Yeah, this is so Guillaume Enemann. Yeah, so Guillaume's having a pretty good run here. Um, like I said, he's making things look easy. Heads down towards the finish. I'm sure he'll pick up his teammates um, as they head in towards the finish line. So that's team number nine. That uh, is the pure clubs. That's, uh, that's the two Petter brothers, isn't it? There you yeah, go, yeah. There's um, Michael Petter on the final leg. And Davide Pe Petter. And that was with the uh, US athlete, Troy Sigmund, who hmm. joined them at the last minute. Uh, but they were led off by Daniele Baggio. Perfect. Oh, that's 19. That's, yes, that's, that's, that's Mia, isn't it? No, that's Emma Sorry. Royd from the Widsau yep. team. So, there you go. So there we go, Gillem just climbing up over the bridge just before he heads down the finish. We'll see him, I'm sure we'll see him pick up his Team Zog's teammates. There we go. And uh, there we go. So that's the team of Alex Porelli, Delphine, Danilou, Stefano, Davide and Gillem. And we're crossing the finish line, complete with a very own cameraman. And uh, yeah, congratulations guys on completing the Xterra short track team relay. Ah, Team USA. This is uh, Mike P. 
Pierce. Michael Pierce, he's, um, if you want to find out a little bit more about him, go to the Xterra Planet page and you'll find the Celebration of Human Spirit, number five. A comment from him says, respect all, fear none. And he has that painted on his bike. He's a teacher. I think that's an incredible motto to live by. Mm. And he was racing in the 60-64 category yesterday. Yeah, ama but amazing, Michael. And uh, I said, one of these guys who could put his hand up and said, I'm happy to race. Doesn't matter with who. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's just here to kind of take part, meet some new people. And uh, I think, you know, Michael really embodies the spirit of what this sport is about. Ooh, that was nearly a slip. <laughs> yeah, keeping us all on our toes. And as it's athlete 9D coming across in towards the finishing. It's Michael Petter. Yeah, from the Pure Club. Here we go, it looks like he's winding things up for a sprint finish against his teammates. <laughs> he's like, come on guys, keep up. <laughs> come on, we're going for a time. <laughs> he doesn't want to slow down. Yeah, nice one guys, well done. <laughs> oh, and a bit of advertising there for the Zogs bag. Oh, there we go, so yeah, every single athlete who, uh, who competed uh, had a, a big, nice Zogs bag full of swag. And uh, yeah, he's carrying it everywhere. Oh, oh, it's a nice little bit of romance out on the course. So this is um, Emma Reidel from Germany. Top 10 finish yesterday in the 25-29 category, racing for Witzau, which is the wild boar team, made up of Pamela Mittermeier, Dominique Horbeck, both from Germany, Christina Herbs from Austria, just narrowly missing out the podium yesterday. And finally, Emma Voidel. So three women, one man. I think she's worked quite hard for that. <laughs> Here we go. So this is Mia from the Race Off Road team. Like I said, I had an amazing, you know, Xterra World Championship debut yesterday. Uh, second age group overall and first in her age group. Already booking her ticket to the 2024 Xterra World Championships back here in Molvino. So by by virtue of all of the first place finishes in every single age category, already tick but the box for qualification the, the win, for yeah, next year. The winners also got something rather special. Yes, they, got a, they got a world championship top. Yeah, so here we go. This is a truly international team. You've got, uh, is this a Chilean? A Puerto Rican uh, athlete from the Netherlands and I said uh, Mike Pierce finishing things off from the USA. That's external one. Pedro Miranda from Peru, Carlos Castillo Founders from Chile, uh, Bart Hollemans from Nederlander, uh, 50 to 54, and Mike Pierce. So I think that for me is what exactly embodies the spirit of Xterra. Four guys from four different countries, never met each other before this morning, and they are uh, they're now going to have some some stories to take home with them about the three guys that they met and uh, did the Xterra age group short track relay with. That was the team Taiwan boys. That was Chung Chao Yang, uh, Liao Yan Chu, Chiang Cheng Yu, and Li Kung Ying. So Mir just finishing off. I know that there will be a, uh, an extremely animated finish line celebration from she's this team. She's in her final year at study, of study at the moment, or has she graduated? Um, I, no, I think she's still got a few more years to go. I think she's studying medicine, so oh. that's uh, probably a student for the rest of her life. Um, but like I said, it's amazing. These age groupers are balancing full-time jobs um, whilst trying to perform at the highest level. I think it's everything. And, you know, it's just super inspiring. And, um, you know, like Elise mentioned earlier it's it's fun to watch and and to see uh see these guys compete on a course that's exactly the same as what they do there we go it's team number 10 race off road coming into the finish it's uh that it's was a uh, renal brennan great britain karen heppenstall great britain sam girling great britain and mia Patton. So yeah and, and over the top excited finish is in their contract Oh, uh, right. So I'd expect to see some, some, <laughs> some decent finish lines. There we go. Uh, Ronell <laughs> taking it nice and relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So great job from those guys. Amazing. And with matching kit, very smart. Oh, yeah. yeah, we don't mess around. Yeah, great job, guys. Done us proud. 
Okay, so this is the the Spanish team, the ex pain team. Uh, so this is our all female team. So uh, they are heading in towards the finish. Well, Elena Gomez Cuevas, uh, Ana Gay Paraga, Ana Celia Cruz del Campo, and Monica Carascosa Garcia. There you go. So I think this is our Taiwanese team. Yeah, this is carrying, carrying the, the injury as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, these guys have had some bumps and some scrapes this week, and uh, but they fully embraced, uh, you know, the full spirit of Exterra, and, and like I said, Taiwan, Exterra Taiwan is is one of my favourite. Oh, look at this events, and uh, <coughs> so I, you know, I'm so pleased to, uh, you know, see these guys make the trip across. Well, and, uh, you you went out there for the race this year, dog. It, it looked really really impressive from afar. Oh, it's such a great event, and like I said, it, it's nice to. Um, welcome these guys back to you know to Europe and return the favour so a great uh, great event from these Taiwanese four do you, would you if you wanted to if you wanted to have a big holiday next year which is going to be your excuse to everybody else it's a holiday but really it's a race <laughs> would you recommend an athlete from Europe to go out to Taiwan if just you, for yeah. the experience the, the amazing thing Asia is a completely different experience to to Europe but in an amazing way uh, so I think getting yourself on a plane and, and like I said, tripping over to uh, Taiwan for certainly a, a, one of the most unique experiences on the circuit, I'd 100% recommend it. So ladies and gentlemen, look at the diary for next year. And if you want to make that journey and have something very special, be a European, travel all the way to Taiwan and get the experience, the warmth of the experience there. You'll recognize many faces and many voices when you get there because the, the Xterra team, there are certain key members who will be there. But when we, you can look back at the race because that's on the uh, Xterra Planet Live page. All of the videos of the races, they're not hidden behind a paywall. You can watch them at your leisure and you'll see exactly what went on there. It looked stunning. Uh, Team X Spain, hopefully they'll be across the finish line. So all four of them now uh, will be in the finish area. We're not sure if we're going to get a chance to go down for any more interviews, but it would be nice if we could. So here she comes. This is uh, Monica Carrascosa Garcia. She just missed the podium yesterday in the 50-54 category. But I think, you know, it's a world championship level. I think on that fourth place, uh, I think she'll still be super excited. So, <laughs> so here we go. So it's, it's our, this is our first uh, all-female team. Mm. So congratulations, guys, for... Uh, for racing. Um, thank you for doing the job for the ladies. Amazing. <laughs> Massive smiles. Incredible. There were a couple of races last year, or oh, this year in Spain. There was the Costa Brava. There was, um, was it, what was the other one? No, so we, yeah, Costa Brava, we were, we were back in Spain for the first time in, in a long time. And I said a fantastic race, and we look forward to heading back there soon. This looks like our. This is Team Eagles. Exactly. So Team Eagles are almost, almost at the finish, and then we have our entire field home. This is uh, Jean Claude Preiser from Germany in the 65-69 category. So race yesterday. Here he is, racing again today. Team Eagles made up of Matteo uh, Quacarelli from Italy, Viola Dorotea Giglioli, and Mariana Angelica Giglioli. So, so uh, two sisters there, both racing yesterday. Uh, Viola was racing in the 25-29 age group and Mariana racing in the younger age group 20-24. So there we go, so still plenty of people wandering around the course giving these guys a, uh, a big cheer as they come past. So there we go, so that's our, you, know, you can see our medical team in the background just keeping an eye on things, making sure everything is all good and like you said earlier Paul, a massive thank you to to these guys who we, we couldn't run this event without the support and the dedication of the local crews here. Well, the thing with Xterra is things do happen when you're out on the bike course because it is uh, a, a question of riding on rocks, riding on routes. Uh, on the run course, exactly the same. You've got uh, a slight misjudgment, a distraction, and you're down. But I think we were relatively lucky yesterday. Um, there weren't that many falls. There weren't that many um, DNFs. We've had during the season, We've uh, sadly, we, we didn't get to see Max Chanet racing here. A mountain bike crash took him out with uh, damage to his elbow. And in the race in the Czech Republic, we lost uh, Artur Forissier with a spectacularly broken collarbone. Uh, he still 
he's able to contribute because he was doing the uh, French commentary yesterday and for the short track. Um, we nearly lost Sandra Meyerhofer with, again, a, a very bad crash in the Czech Republic, but she has managed to take time off, repair herself, come back. So it's a, a sport that is going to be on the edge, if, um, but it's been good to see that so few people were injured yesterday. We are able to go down one more time to the roving microphone. No? No, he's not quite ready yet. Ah, right. No, no. So, we, like I said, uh, we're just tracking... Uh, the so I have to completely blank to where we're at. Uh, this should be uh, uh, so yes, prize. Perfect. So we're just trekking <coughs> this last athlete as he heads towards the finish line, and uh, I know the atmosphere down there is going to be electric, because I imagine a lot of the teams would have hung around and uh, wanted to cheer everybody in. So I'm sure as he'll pick up his teammate, uh, he's just got two more bridges to go, making full use of the handrail. I don't blame him. I think after competing yesterday and then getting back up, getting all of your kit back ready again and, and rocking up the transition. And what was their oldest age group yesterday? Uh, yes, so we, our oldest finisher yesterday was in the 75 to 79 <laughs> category. Wow. Here we go. So, yeah, giving a good wave to the crowd. I said the nice thing about... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look you. at that. Wow. I told you the finish line would be good. <laughs> so, I'm, I don't think we need to say anything just now, Paul, but I think... That's good. This is the Exterra family. I can spot in there Claudio Di Dionisio, one of the Italian officials, stayed on to support the event. <laughs> And let the party start. <laughs> what, a, I said, what a fantastic way to finish uh, this Xterra World Championship weekend, Paul. And that blue water, look at it, or bluey green water. White beach, fantastic quality water. It, the lake is a lot deeper today. It, it really has risen, the, 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 the rain coming off the mountains. So yeah, we can see lots of our team, lots of the mixed team relays, hanging out, taking selfies, hanging out with the staff. Like I said, it's uh, at this point of the day, um, you know, everyone is family. It doesn't matter whether you came first, came last, it matters that you're here. Mm -hmm. So, run down there, so top ten. The Germans, Jag de Wildsau from Team Triathlonverein Berg Legenfeld. Team Triangles, Les Mouflons, SH Training Team, uh, Azmez, Trai 42, Markov, Speed Girls, and Moustache Gentlemen. Oh, that is a cracking name. <laughs> it's the best Extra name. Germany and ITA for team. And then our final 20. Exactly. So when coming we? through. We've got 25, didn't we? Uh, 25 teams today. So, like I said, uh, the Team Mouflon will be winning that mixed team category, mm -hmm. so as a balance of men and women. And then we have the Team X Pain there in 24th place overall, but winning first place all female team. So, congratulations to everybody. Uh, today was not about how fast you go or how many trophies you win, it was about. A celebration of the Exterra community and the Exterra spirit, and uh, wrapping up this Exterra World Championships 2023. Showing just how tough they were, because don't forget they raced <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! I think we're uh, too early to show that sort of action on television. But the branding here, uh, Exterra, it's been beautifully created. The village uh, over the course of the week has grown, um, but equally over the course of the next couple of days, it will disappear within a a week or so the grass will be back to normal and then as the autumn gradually takes hold and the first snows start falling it will transform into a winter wonderland this is a location which is easy to get to cross the Brenner Pass glide down the road turn right and you'll be here fly in a number of airports will get you quite close to the venue um, but if you are a mountain biker if you like walking, if you like the scenery, if you just want to have a, a good holiday. There we go. We can't can recommend anywhere better than so Morgan. So we can see the party on the finish line is just getting started. So there's a real mixture of Exterra staff, our local crews from the Exterra Italy team, the local volunteers from the region of Malvino, uh, combined with a whole load of athletes. Uh, like I said, this is Exterra. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> ah, there's Nico stuck in the thick of it there. Yeah, I think this is like spot. Okay, so I think, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can begin to wrap up our coverage of the Xterra World Championships 2023. Oh, we've had three live broadcasts, Doug. We've, uh, we've given you the short track with the invitation-only pro race. A few wild cards dropped in there to increase the numbers. We've then given you the World Championships, that road to Molbeno, which started, in fact, it started last year because some of the qualification races took place very close to this date and your, your success was then carried over. We've had the road to Molveno, and then finally today we've had this wonderful opportunity to see age groups racing over the short track course. Molveno is a very special location. Um, it's been great to come here again. We are coming back next year because it's the World Championships again next year. So for all of you around the world who want to qualify and make your journey, this is the start of your journey. Mm. It's been great working with you, Doug. Oh, thank you, Paul. And if you want any more information about any Xterra racing around the world, how to qualify for Molvino and, and how to get involved with this wonderful sport, head to xterraplanet.com for more information. So, it's a big thank you from me, it's a big thank you from Paul, and we'll see you next time. But now some highlights. <laughs>